Hey fellas, look at that. <clears throat> it's like in order to do a video, I have to know what I'm calling this. I don't know what this is called and I don't know what to say about it. And I don't know where to start. Here, how about this? It's going to be a two piece silicone mold. Never done that before. I don't even know if that's a good idea but it's gonna be that. Neato Mosquito design feature, open mouth that jig head goes into. And it has to be a two piece because I wouldn't be able to get this bait out of this mold if it wasn't. But I like a tail design like that for this time of the year. There might be some arms coming off of this thing too. You saw it in the thumbnail, I didn't yet. So I don't know, but let's go. Let's commence the making of this. That is an interesting cutout right there. If I can miraculously not break this tail, it's gonna be a sweet bait. Maybe that wasn't the right tool for the job. Whoops. There, I cut that one out way better. Don't even have to do any of that other stupid stuff I was just doing. Why didn't I think that was gonna be extremely aggressive? I thought it was like gonna be like bzz, bzz, but it was like <laughs> Take my pencil. Start mapping this bait out. Yeah, anymore I just eyeball everything. I didn't even get the stencils out. And if I do end up wanting this tail thinner, it's no biggie. I can just make it thinner. Oh! Oh my goodness! What the heck? I was blowing all this stuff away, but my bait was right here. And I blew it into the blade, and it did like a flipty poo oh. <laughs> but more importantly it it took a big gash out of my bait but look I was off that line a little bit so it technically didn't even touch my bait except down there but don't look at that This is gonna be a bit of a delicate process. I just had to put a fin on this. Yeah, that's some pretty hardcore fin carving right there. This might take the cake for the most delicate thing I've ever carved, but here we go. Take the cake, I don't care. This'll just be a beautiful little piece when it's done, you know? So intricate. It's like a, it's like a dragon. Irwin's the sharpest. Their edges only last like six cuts, but they're the sharpest, so I use them. This cut's not easy. I can't come in from the way I want because of this fin. Some people carve like this though, by choice. And I think those people are weird. This is not a cool angle to carve at. Not cool, man. 
They must have learned it from their grandpa or something. He didn't have YouTube to learn how to carve stuff, so he, he just thought you should pinch it between your thumb and the blade. <laughs> That is coming from a guy who just did this. With no hesitation, so, you know. That is smoothing up nicely. I think that section back here, I'm gonna leave edgy and flat like that. Water catching, you know? I had some thoughts of trying to get ribbing on the body. The closer this comes to being fully carved, the more I realize, no. I think we'll be doing something else. I find with soft plastics, it's good to give that eye socket as much depth as you can get away with. That keeps them held in better. Time to not destroy all this hard work again. That's nice. That's very hollow. Big cavity in there. Okay, I'm gonna put the Dremel away. I'm gonna glue this back on, because that's a nice clean cut, and put the Dremel away. Right, that's too much glue. Time to carve its face. These are some small gills. That's pretty easy to line up with that flat bottom. It's a skill, learning how to like roll the paper along your scissors while cutting to get a smooth, even cut, not bumpy cut, you know? I saw a Japanese dude do that really well once. It was an impressive sight. You know, it's not just something you learn in first grade. People go on from there and develop insane scissor cutting careers. Just gonna have a little bit of scaling, really roughly. That's barely cutting anything. It's more just rounding off that edge by pushing it around. Works really good on Tupelo. It's cutting a little bit. Oops, cut way too much off that one. The bigger the scale, the more you cut off to make them all the same shape and proportional. There's some scalage. I don't want to do more than that for scales. Leave this just a smooth, thin, flappy thing. Last little detail I did off camera was cut those gill striations or whatever those are. I cut those. One pass with a knife. Makes them really defined. It makes it so when you put the polyurethane on, it's a sheer carving, like it's an edge. And you can use that effect on different details to make them different from other details. Some polyurethane will clean all this up nicely. Yes, I just had coffee.
I got this master to a smooth doffed finish that I've been wanting to try. I think this is gonna be good. A super, super heavy matte finish was put down first and then a really thin gloss finish was put over that. I hope you guys, you see the glare, how it's still slightly bumpy. It's not a perfect gloss. I think that gives the bait more of a presence in the water if there's a slight matte finish and it's not just all gloss. If it's gloss, it like blends into the water really good. Might be good for really clear water presentations, but in the river, I want this finish on this bait. So the fin, that top fin is the center line. The most important part is gonna be to center this tail and get that down to the correct depth and it's not twisted or anything. This clay is pretty stiff and it, it'll push this wood around. We need everything straight and centered. And we need a perfect part line too. I'm gonna take my time with this. Pretty much the most important step. So, on the mouth of this, I hope you guys can see, I decided to do it that way. I put the part line all the way over on the other side of this bait. So all of that mouth cavity can be on one piece instead of splitting it into two. It might make for more symmetrical mouth cavity castings as this mold gets a little older. I'm happy with that, let's pour it, actually. Let's get our mold release in here. Since I bought, dang it, I just dumped all that in. Look at that. There's a bunch of crap on that lid and I just dumped it in my silicone, wow. But as I was saying, since I bought five gallons of this stuff, I have to stir it every single time. Oh, what in the world? How'd that cut break? What is that? I was just holding on to it and it broke. Well, it was only designed to hold water. <laughs> okay, that should be enough. We're gonna stir this real good, we're gonna vacuum it, and we're gonna pour it. Okay, that's all it's gotta be. I mixed way too much. See you on the flip side. Oh boy, 12 hours later. See how clean this is. All right, I'm seeing some weird stuff. There's some silicone. Is that scales? Okay, it just, it leaked into a cavity. This is probably some awkward, very awkward video, I'm sorry. That's, that's not bad at all. Pull this garbage off here. I can deal with that. Confidence boost plus 20 points. Our molds ready to demold. Never drop guard, fellas. That's a lovely sight. Quite a bit of carving and work to get it here. Let's see how clean the mold breaks. Very nice. This one's not there. See, stuff like this happens with silicone. See, I'm pulling it apart, but that's wanting to happen, but it needs to break, yeah. That could have just screwed everything up, but it didn't, so never mind. So 
sweet man. No sharp things jetting out that the plastic can grab and pull away with. It picked up the threading off of the screw I, I had in the bait to hold it. <laughs> we don't need that. That'll be good uh, jig point, hook point on your jig placement to rig the bait, you know? That looks pretty crazy with that thing up in the head right there, but hopefully it looks cool. Hey Finn. What are you, what are you doing? Hey, Let's see first if I can pour this cavity and it goes down the tail and up and comes back over and I see it filling in back here too with just one color. Our one color is gonna be dark gold. This is definitely over 350. Pour it slow and even. It did not. Let's see if I can pour this side now and it connects. Oh boy, this might be tough. So I poured out most of that just so it would cool off quicker. I'm kind of thinking this won't be a usable bait, but let's see what happened. So we didn't get connection or a full pour. That didn't fill in. So let's try some different techniques of pouring this. Broke the heat gun out too. I'm gonna get the tail really, really hot. And the plastic really hot. This is like 370. It makes it thinner, it really does. Heat gun's gonna come off and the plastic's gonna go in right away into the tail. I don't think there's any way that top fin has a chance of being poured. I just splashed it right over the top fin, caught a whole bunch of air in it. But hopefully the tail is poured on this bait. It felt like it was good, that felt good. Please be a full tail. That seems like a full tail with an air bubble. Dang it. You guys see that bubble? That's probably where they met. Poured it from this end, got to there. You can pull on that, it's not really. It's fishable. I'll throw it. The ultimate question of the video has been answered though. In its pure soft plastic form, the tail stands up by itself. It just needs preheats and to be poured fast. Here we go, fellas, watch close. Actually, I'm gonna pour the top fin first. Make sure it gets poured. This is my favorite technique with silicone open pour. To fill up the cavity, pour it out, and then pour another color in so you can layer colors. Ouch, that was still completely hot. I just gotta finish this body here. Let's do like a, yeah, let's do a red. I'm gonna do this real quick because I want a red tip tail if I got a red body. See how that turned out. See, it didn't turn out all the way. Good thing I did that. I poured this side a little too fast. That's a nice color. That was a perfect, dang it, the top fin. <laughs> Bob Saget. Look at that. This is such a hard bait to pour perfectly. Okay, I'm not gonna record any more pours. But if I end up doing a perfect one, I will show you the perfect one. You get the gist by now. <laughs> this is just getting bad, fellas. So much heating is necessary to make this pour correctly that I'm burning the corners of the bait and it didn't even pour correctly. Darn. So for the sake of uh, being able to pour your bait, something like this would need to be simplified or I need a thicker tail because the tails are nice and floppy. Probably a thicker tail to get that plastic back there and just make all of the pouring consistent. That really is the line that you ride when you make this stuff. You want thinness for action, but you want thickness for pourability. It was slow going because I only have one mold, but I think I have enough. And there's a fine example of what I was going for. A weird serpenty, wormy-ish, aggressive fish with a jig head in its mouth. <laughs> Let's see what it catches. That structure over there is where the walleyes are, fellas. I'm telling you. Let's see what it looks like in the water. It, it really looks like exactly what it needs to. The tail on a steady retrieve is more of a shake. It's not a twister tail kind of thing at all. But when you let it loose, that's when it shines.
Give me that tappy tap. This is what we got going on on the bottom. It really is an immaculate action. That tail coils back up every time. Here is what we are dealing with. Morning. It's a nice chilly November morning. Let's go to the ditch. I'm not bringing the kayak. Let's just go to the ditch. I saw a guy pulling walleye out of there last time I was there. We'll see if this bait can do the same. Okay. Weapon of choice. Let's make it happen. Got one. Fish on, fellas. And it's not a large mouth. Decent smally. <laughs> Still a bass. It's official. Bass like this thing. Smallmouth. Smallmouth bass. Smallmouth bass like this thing. It's official. Let's not throw you. I'm gonna throw you a little bit. Be free. Ah, we did it. Let's see if we can catch 20 more. Because that was quick. Oh, that was a good bite. Dang. They're panting me. I learned that term from Spencer. River certified Spencer. When your bait gets pulled off the hook, you get depanted. Well, if I would have known to stop at that smallmouth this morning within the first 10 minutes of fishing, I would have. But it did catch a smallmouth. It's official. Successful video. It's on to the next bait for me. I want to get started on that. But first, stick around if you want to watch me set up a fire pit. I got a big copper plated bowl one. I thought it'd look cool once that starts burning and stuff. I didn't know there was a hole in it. The heck even is that? I didn't want a hole in it. It should be fine. This is going on the deck, not normal. Usually you're not supposed to do that. But this thing's heavier than the fire pit. And on to the next bait. The bait making uh, section of this video is over. So on to setting up a fire pit actually. That's what we're doing now. That's, that's a seriously well-packaged box. Oh man, that's those hardcore staples. Those staples are good. <laughs> this is a big insulating heat shield for this to go over so that it won't melt the composite boards on my deck. Let's get this fire pit together real quick. Sixteen more to go. I'm just hoping my house insurance premium doesn't spike because they watch these videos. So this is supposed to just slide over this like a glove. Let's see. Whoa, dude. Okay. Oh no. How are you supposed to? Dude, how'd you get out? I did it. It fits just a little off on everything, but I expected nothing less. Found it on Amazon. Right on. Let's see how it looks on the deck. Let's start a fire. cardboard that the fire pit came in. That's the best way to christen it, I would assume. This is the driest oak in the world. It really pops off of there, you know? 
Gotta go grab it every time. I like the pings on the bowl when it pops. All right, I should probably give you an update on how this did in the next video or something instead of drawing this out any further. I'm pretty sure this video is over. Thanks for watching all the way through. On to the next bait. must have learned it from their grandpa or something. Well, it was only designed to hold water. Dang it! Take the cake, I don't care. Okay, I'm gonna put the Dremel away. I'll let you know if my deck burns down too.